Good morning, everybody. So normally we do Tip Tuesday, but instead I decided uh, today's video is going to be Teach Me Tuesday. So not too many people know that um, pelvic floor physiotherapists treat men, and um, they don't really we don't really talk about why we treat men or what men come to see a pelvic floor physiotherapist for. So today I want to kind of go over. Um, why men develop bladder issues after prostate surgery. So not every man, but a very, very large portion of men do experience uh, urinary leakage um, after having a prostate surgery. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about why that is and what we sort of do from a physiotherapy perspective. So I'm gonna be kind of turning this because uh, I think visuals uh, and diagrams are gonna be helpful. So this is a um, side view of a male pelvic floor. So we have right here the bladder. So there's the bladder. This right here is the rectum. This little um, walnut size circle here is the prostate. So um, there are two main types of surgeries that a man might um, experience or go through related to a prostate. So one is a is called a TERP. And a TERP is for men who have um, sort of uh, large prostates and the prostate tissue has kind of blocked off the urethra making the flow of urine um, challenging to pass through. So they might be experiencing a weak stream. Uh, so th what the doctors do is they kind of go in and kind of clean up the um, excess tissue um, around the urethra. So at the top here, at the top of the bladder is where we have the external, uh, sorry, the internal uh, sphincter. So the internal sphincter is actually not under our conscious control. So it squeezes um, when the bladder has emptied. Uh, there's a reflex that then signals the um, muscles to, you know, to contract. And then at the base here is the external sphincter. So this uh, muscle is something that we do have conscious control of, meaning if I perform a Kegel and I squeeze this muscle, um, I can consciously contract. However, this muscle, I can't, I can't contract it um, on my own. So if in the process of doing the TERP, when they're cleaning out the tissue, if they sort of, um, you know, scrape or, or work very closely to the internal sphincter, it may not um, function as optimally, um, allowing urine to pass through because it doesn't close off. Um, and then if the external sphincter uh, is not uh, able to contract fast enough or you know the man's unaware of how to contract it, then certainly the urine can pass all the way through and we have uh, leakage. In the case of um, prostate surgery, so this is most, um, common in uh, post prostatectomy, so when the prostate has been removed due to cancerous cells. Depending on the extent of the surgery, if it's just kind of removing the prostate, um, the internal sphincter may or may not be disturbed, uh, but if it's a more radical pr prostatectomy, they may actually remove part of the internal sphincter and or remove the entire internal sphincter, which basically, I like to use an analogy called the plumber and the assistant. So if you if you think of the internal sphincter like the master plumber, he knows his job inside and out. He doesn't need anybody to explain to him how to do his job. But if he becomes injured or is completely removed from the um, uh, completely removed, then the assistant is left to do all of the work. So what happens is either the assistant, um, you know, the man doesn't know how to do the contraction or the contractions or the muscle is not strong enough to do the job that would, you know, to do both jobs, right? So now the assistant has to do both jobs. Um, and if it's not fast enough, if it doesn't have enough endurance and doesn't have enough strength, then the urine just passes through. So basically as a pelvic floor physiotherapist, what I'm, what we're assessing is what is the function? What is the strength? What is the endurance, the speed um, of the external uh, pelvic, well, they're internal, but the external sphincter, the one that we have conscious control of, is it able 
to do the job of the master plumber. And so we train the muscle essentially to try to get it to be as good as um, or as close to um, the internal sphincter. So um, that's just a little bit of information as to why um, there might be some bladder or urinary leakage after prostate surgery. So if you know anybody or you yourself are experiencing issues, come, come see a pelvic floor physio. We can take a look, uh, see what's happening with the muscles and set you up with the right exercise program uh, to help you deal with the issue. And that is all for today's Teach Me Tuesday. Have a great day, everybody.